So I know that, uh, indeed, that is a lot of ladies in this room. And uh, listen to me, and I will recommend you with a new formulation or old formulation that will help your health, all right? So in particular, so women today, not only have to take care of the family, and also have to take care of the job. So we are not scientists to most of the people in this room. So I want to look at the story as a history. So you enjoy your lunch and lay back and listen to me. I want to bring you back to the Yun Dynasty. Right? <laughs> so uh, you may be surprised. I put this uh, diagram. Well, if uh, some astrophysicists give a talk in this area, maybe put universe as the starting material. But I want you to recall and relate Chinese medicine is not only for, for the health. And indeed, Chinese medicine, for that many years, we have incorporated that as a more holistic point of view. Very simple. Human being is very small. We belong to the part of the universe. We live according to yin yang and the five elements. Right? We need to keep a balance with the universe. You put clothes on when this is winter. You wear a t-shirt when this is summer. You eat different things during different weather. And indeed, that's what we are talking about, a more holistic point of view of Chinese medicine. I want you to give you a few names. All right? If you don't remember my name, and I'm sure you remember those people. All right? Chinese medicine is not only as a medicine, and indeed, they incorporate it in our cultures. So I'll give you one example. We have Wato, all right? So in the, uh, after the Han Dynasty, Samko. So we have a temple in Anhui, and this is a Sun Simao in the Tang Dynasty. We have the Yao Wang Liu in Xianxi. So and indeed, those TCM practitioners, they are the medical doctors. They are not only put in a history as a medical doctor, we do put them as a temple. I want to introduce two books. This is a very important book indeed. So one is uh, Shen Nong Wen Chou Jing. So that was written down in a hundred years before Christ. So remember, that period of time is a 2000 something years ago. In Europe, if I recall it right, it is the Roman Empire, they are still fighting against each other. But in China, there was somebody put down 365 herbs. Not only put it down the name, put down their usage and where you can find them. And not only that, that book had classified all the herbs, top quality, <coughs> middle quality, and the low quality. The top quality, very simple very good and you eat them as a daily life. You can eat it as a food, as a dessert, or even as water. That means you can eat them as much as you like. But for the middle class, and indeed, you need to take precaution. You do not eat too much. For the lower class herb, you have a precaution. They have toxicity. So we are talking about 2,000 years ago. So they put down all those descriptions. This is in the uh, Ming Dynasty, not that long ago. So he put down 1,895 herbs with very good classification and very good morphology. And they will tell you exactly where you can go to pick up the herb, how they look like, what they for. Well, we are talking about 600 years ago. Many Westerners, we do have Westerners at this table. They will ask me a question. So is Chinese, Western, Chinese medicine is working, right? So I'm telling you, they are. I provide you with some statistics. So if you look at the Western medicine, they only come into China in the early beginning of the Qing Dynasty. Before that, we all depend on the Chinese medicines. And look at this table. The population of China in the Tang Dynasty, in the Song Dynasty, in the Ming Dynasty, is the largest as compared to Europe. And indeed, when you think about the average life of men and women in China and Japan, we are right on the top. All right? And sorry that better than the Western 
or the U.S. people. So indeed, you can say that the Chinese medicine did play a role historically in China. Okay, before I tell you a story, let me tell you what do we have today. So if you look at the Chinese medicines are sales volume per year. So we make something like a 50 billion US dollars per year business. So the China take 10%, the German take 30%, the Japanese take 40%, all right? So, but when you look at all those uh, raw material, where are they coming from? 90% coming from China. So what are the simple answer? So the answer is the Chinese make that small amount of money all based on the farmer. Our farmer in China is very poor because they are producing all those ginkgo biloba at one euro of 10 kilo shipped to Germany. You turn it around and ship back the extract to Hong Kong as one gram, 5,000 Hong Kong dollars. So this is the way the German make money. As well as the German, the Japanese, they can make good money out of that Chinese medicine. Today, we have more and more people taking Chinese medicines. If you take that lumber in China, all right, and 60 to 40. But I'm telling you, the Western medicines today in China who make the money, the Europe and the US. The Chinese, we are all coming from mainland China. When you look at the what kind of thing that they make money, I can tell you that we call it the proprietary Chinese medicines. They me in a capsule, in a powder form, in a tea bag, as a dessert or some kind of a form rather than the raw material. And this is in particular, the Japanese is doing very well. So if you go to Japan, so they have the same Chinese formulation like we have in Hong Kong. Their sales, they will be 50 times or 100 times more than they'll be paid in Hong Kong. Right. So what are the problems of Chinese medicine within China? We do have a lot of problems. All right? I tell you one of the problems already mentioned by uh, Max's quality control. Our farmer in China is exhausted. All right? So they are polluted in particular. They, are, well, they don't make money. They are not well educated. And indeed, they sometimes they spoil the land. They spoil the water. The overuse of the chemical fertilizers. The overuse of the fertilizers. Okay? So I'm telling you that for those people, they grow Dong Gui in Gansu. I ask them how much they make per year. 3,000 3, RMB. All right? About 300 euro per year per person. Right? So and indeed, this is a tremendous uh, problem for the land being uh, not make full use of them in China. Quality control. On the market, you can see that I cite some of the uh, local newspapers. So and indeed, in many, many cases, that happens very often. So people take the wrong herb, right? And people take the herb, they have heavy metal. And people take the, take the herb, they have a toxic substance. And indeed, you and I will not want to buy Chinese herb by yourself. And indeed, Mary and uh, Mr. Ding already asked me to help to buy those <laughs> Chinese medicines. And they know that this is a challenge. The other problem of the Chinese medicine is we do not know how they work. So I'm telling you that uh, it based on the yin yang, based on the five elements, you will say that, what is that? So in the Western medicine, we talk about all those endocrine immune systems. So and indeed, how can we, using that formulation in Chinese medicine, to explain what happened in our body? This is another challenge for the Chinese medicine today. The Chinese medicines I mentioned, we should look at them as a more holistic point of view. So and indeed, if you look at the book written down in about 400 years before Christ, Wang Di, 19. So they will tell you what the Chinese medicine mean, all right? The diagnosis, they did talk about that, and that is indeed the Western medicine is doing that today. So you diagnose it, and I prescribe you with some kind of problem. But more than that, there are two particular elements within that book. Number one, the holistic point of view. Ten yuan he. That means you, human being, belong to the universe. You live according to the universe. 
you balance yourself with the universe. All right? So the other thing is the disease prevention. In Chinese cultures, we have a lot of dou yong sun. Right? That means keep yourself healthy. Prevention of disease better than the cure of the disease. Look at cancer. Look at Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Look at Parkinson. So in many cases, when you find the disease, it's already too late. So and indeed, this is the tone that the Western medicine will not have in general. The five elements, what are they? So we have the uh, fire, earth, gold, water, and wood. So this five element make up the universe, as well as make up your body. So if you look at those uh, system in the Western medicines, the fire is corresponding to the heart. The earth is corresponding to the spleen and the stomach. The gold is corresponding to the lung, and water is the kidney, and the wood is the liver. Some gone by some. So they are corresponding to each other. And indeed, in the history, so if you are a Chinese medicine doctor, so you come to me and you say that I'm deficiency is the liver, deficiency of the wood, all right? That's good. So I prescribe you with the herb. They can stimulate the wood, for example, chai wu. So if you are deficiency of the gold in the lung, I prescribe you with hanyang, almond. So in that scenario, we take the herb from the natural environment, give it to your body, what for? Keep your body five element balance and keep the yin yang balance and so that your disease status can be restored to normal. Simple idea. Alright, I want to go back about the decaution for ladies. Alright, so in particular we have so many ladies here and we want to really see what this decaution <coughs> will be. So this is called the Dong Gui Du Shi Tang. So and indeed, most of the ladies, I think, in this room have tried Dong Gui before. Very popular. They is prescribed that the number one herb for lady is Dong Gui, right? Angelica. So in Europe, you have Angelica extract too. So this decaution about 15 years ago, when we decide that we should review how those herbal formulations being worked in Chinese medicine, we decide to work on this decaution for very good reasons. Number one, only two herbs. We have the Angelica Silitis Redis, Dong Gui, and Aspergillus Redis, Wang Qi. Two hub, very simple, all right? So whatever we do, make it simple. Number two, this is prescribed for women, all right? No matter the woman suffer from menopause, suffer from osteoporosis, suffer from depression, suffer from hot flesh, this is for women, all right? At least I have half of the population. They will use that the cause eventually. So this is the reason why we use that uh, the cause. So this the cause is by a guy called Li Dongyuan in the Yun Dynasty, right? So that is uh, about 800 years ago. So he tell you, you use five parts of Dong Gui Angelica Sinesis, one part of uh, Wang Qi, and then two bowls of water. Boil that until the one bowl of water, and then you turn it into Dong Gui Bu Shi Tong. For the woman, they suffer osteoporosis, menopause, and the hot flesh. All right, before I talk about that, let's look at who is Li Dongyuan? So if you are a big believer of Chinese medicine's theory, Yun Dynasty is the best for very good reasons. The Yun Dynasty is the poorest Chinese that you can find in the whole Chinese history. The Mongol, the Mongolian occupied China. The Chinese people, they are the lower class people. No job, they have war, all right? And then and in particular, the Jing Dynasty, they live uh, Liu Dynasty, as well as the Yun Dynasty. So Li Dongyuan, in, indeed, in the Yun Dynasty, we have uh, four major persons for all those are TCM field. <coughs> Li Dongyuan is a Bo Tou Pai. That means they are talking about the stomach, all right? So Lao Yun So, Hang Liang Pai, what they, what they talk about? Antiviral, all right? So you want something that don't come to your body. Including uh, Zhen Chong Jing, Ju Zhen Han, they are all belong to all those antiviral stories. But except Li Dongyuan is talking about your stomach, the earth theory. And indeed, he is the father of the earth theory throughout the whole Chinese history. Okay, he is the big believer of the earth theory. 
and indeed he is thinking for very good reasons. In the Yun Dynasty, if you are coming from the northern part of China, he is coming from Hebei, very close to Beijing. People have no food, all right? So indeed, they have a problem with the stomach. So the earth, I mentioned, is corresponding to the stomach and the spleen. So the earth theory is very simple. If you grow your garden, all right? So you want the earth, the soil, to be fertilized the soil to be irrigated. You want to have a good soil and so that you have a good plant can grow in your garden. Same theory. So if you want your body in a good health, you keep your stomach happy, all right? So what does it mean? Not only to eat, but you take something that they can stimulate your qi circulation, the vital energy, your immune system, your absorption, and indeed, Chinese medicine very focused on the earth. Earth, if you can't then, Jing, Bu, Shui, Fu, Tu, they ran number five, all right? So Li Dongyuan, and so that he put all those Wang Qi, Dong Guai in a ratio of one to five. So I'm telling you that the Chinese medicine think that he can't the ratio one to five is by the finger. Jing, Bu, Shui, Fu, Tu. So this is the five element. The earth ran number five, all right? And so that he put one to five. So if you don't believe me, you go to the Sifu Chen Shi. This is uh, coming from the uh, Qing Dynasty in Qianlong, written down that uh, by uh, Gei Hiu Lang, all right? So he put down what is the question for, and what should you do with all these decorations. So Li Zhongyuan is a big believer of the Earth theory, and why he made all those uh, Dong Gui Bu Shi Tong? Well, if you look at him, literature, <coughs> He have hundreds something of the formulations. All of them have Wang Qi. They all have the Aspergillus redness, Wang Qi. So Wang Qi, if you look at the Shen Nong Ben Chou Jing, they rank number one, all right? Not only number one, they say that this is the Qi stimulating herb number one, all right? So that means no problem when you take the Wang Qi when you don't have Qi. So what do you mean by don't have qi? That means you feel very tired, you have no blood circulation, you have no immune response. And indeed, from the Chinese name, Wang Qi, so if you can read Chinese, you already know how they look like and what for. Wang, yellow color. The heart is yellow color. Qi is for old people. That is the word for old people. That means it's prescribed for old people, the yellow heart. Okay, why he used Dong Kui? For very good reasons. Dong Gui is prescribed for ladies, number one half. If you open up Shen Nong Ben Chou Jing, they rank in the middle class, all right? Middle class, that means it's not, you can eat that every day. So in the middle class, they prescribe that this is particularly for ladies, all right? So if the lady want to improve your health, take Dong Gui. Good reason. Li Dongyuan put Wang Qi, Dong Gui together. So five to one ratio because it's the rank number five by the earth. We spent almost five years, 15 years ago, to determine which herb we should use, all right? So this is very important. The Chinese herb have a major problem of quality control. Nobody knows where the herb will give you the best herb. For Wang Qi, we have two different species. They could come in from Inner Mongolia. They could come in from Manchuria. They could also come in from the Sanshi. And we decided we take the Sanshi for very good reasons we look at all those uh, chemicals, all right? The chemical is very important. Not only they can tell you how much they contain, and all these chemicals, they can use it as a quality control markers. Very important. So one thing is, you make a tea today. For example, John, you make a tea at home today. So after 10 years, do you think you can make the same tea? Well, not even after the same year. After one minute, you have no guarantee the tea will be identical. And that is very important in Chinese medicine. No matter what you do, you have to make sure that the decoction, they can be producible. So indeed, those chemicals could be reproducible. So Wang Qi, if you look at the total supporting, the active ingredient, the sun is the best. And not only that, we take a particular species. <coughs> and not only that, we take three years old herb to be the best. Don't quite. The Angelicus have many species. In China, we call it Angelica sinensis. 
I do have some Dong Kui in here. I want you to take a look, all right? So our Dong Kui from China, all right, is Angelica Sinesis. As I showed you in here, in terms of empty ingredients, they are very, very good, all right? But our cost, as compared to the Japanese or the Korean Dong Kui, we are cheapest. We are something like a hundred Hong Kong dollar from Kati. In Japan, it's talking about thousand or two thousand Hong Kong dollar per cart, all right? About half a kilo. For very good reasons, our Dong Kui from China, Patera from Gansu is very good, but our cost is no good. Number one, if you go to buy Dong Kui in Hong Kong, I want to show it to the lady. They are all yellow in color, all right? So because the lady like the yellow color, but I'm telling you the real color is this color, all right? So this is the real color. So in Hong Kong, all the Dong Kui, they smoke with sulfur. All right? So next time when you go home to slide the Dong Kui, you swim in the water. Wash away those sulfur before you take it. All right? So this is one problem. And the other problem is, if you close your eye to go to Japan, you buy 10 Dong Kui, all right? And Jericho's. So they come right in front of you, they will all identify. Their shape is identical. Their packaging is identical. They are very, very good looking, period, all right? So when you go to Gansu to buy 10 Dong Kui, good luck. Some of them are broken. Some of them are fuck. Some of them are very small. Some of them is very big. What for? Quality control is very poor in China. And indeed, this is a kind of a problem that we are facing. So facing that, we only produce raw material and cheap price. Anyway, we take the Dong Kui from Gansu. Okay. In uh, Sifu Chen Shu, look at this. If you can read Chinese, it's very good. They say that you put a two bowls of water. You boil until a one bowl of water. So first of all, what is the bowl corresponding to in terms of water? Well, this is the very important. So our bowl today is very different to the bowl in the Yun Dynasty. So if you don't believe me, you go to the Hollywood Road or you go to the Hong Kong Museum. <laughs> you look for the Song Dynasty and the Yun Dynasty bowl. So you measure 10 of them on average, 200 to 300 ml of water. This is one bowl of water. You do that as a two bowl, two times 250 ml of water. So and then uh, Yi Lian, Lian Chen, again, you look at the literature. So what they are referring to, in the Yun Dynasty, Yiliang is corresponding to about 35 or 30, 33 grams. All right, we take 30. All right, so we standardize that one Yiliang is corresponding to 30 grams. So we make this uh, performance. We make different water. What about we boil it according with different water? So the WO5 is the group that we are according to the old formulation. So when then we assay all these chemicals. These are the active chemicals in Wangqi and Dongguai. So look at the W5, very good, they are the highest. So if you look at the functional response, W5 is the highest. That means two bowls of water is better than anything else that you boil the herb together. All right, when you look at Dongguai, they say that Liang Chen, you have to zhou sai. What does it mean? This meaning that you have to process the Dongguai with effort. So in the old time, they used yellow wine, walked out, all right? So what are the yellow wine? You go to uh, Shanghai or Shuzhou, yellow wine is around 14 to 16 percentage of alcohol. So we use 15 percent alcohol, all right? So that effort wash, unfortunately, today, we don't do it. So in the Qing Dynasty, we deal using those effort wash. Today, we don't do it. So what are they? If you talk to the old people, you slide the Dong Kui. All right, put in a big wall. You put the yellow white, you divide them. Very similar to the tea that we are doing today. So you may ask a question, what that for? What that for to the Dong Kui? So indeed, we standardize the protocol. So number one, uh, I, I don't think that my president or my boss in the division will let me to buy a big wall back in the laboratory. So we try to standardize them with the oven, all right? So indeed, you can see that many, many things that they decrease. These are the chemicals. So I want to draw your attention with two particular chemicals. <coughs> Number one, ferric acid. This is the active ingredient in Dong Kui. So when you ever to wash the Dong Kui, the ferric acid coming out better. For the 
Lingo still that go when I did. This is all the volatile oil, they all decrease. Very good resource. When you have the oil in Dong Kui, you can open up the Dong Kui and smell it, all right? So you can smell all those oils. So this is the Dong Kui smell. So those oil, if you put water and heat, they're all gone, all right? So this is the main reason that you do the ethanol wash for Dong Kui. So now we prepare the Dong Kui Pu Tong with the Dong Kui that they have an unprocessed Dong Kui. And also Dong Kui Pu Tong with the Dong Kui you have ethanol wash. Chemically. So for acid, I tell you, they go up from Dong Kui, Lingo still die, they go down. I want to draw your attention, aspergillus, calcosin, foramen. What are these chemicals? These are the active chemical coming from Wang Qi, not from Dong Kui, mm -hmm. right? So but when Wang Qi boil together with the ethanol wash, process Dong Kui, those active ingredients come out better. Very good, all right? When they come out better, biologically, they do better. So the Dong Yang is correct. We need to ethanol wash the Dong Kui. But today, we don't do it. This is a shame. All right, what those uh, lingo still that we do, and now we know this is the bad guy, all right? The bad guy is, I don't know, uh, there are so many ladies in here. Did you take Dong Kui? So what are the Dong Kui uh, side effects that you come across? You feel a sore throat, right? You have ulcer, inhale. So you know what? This is the uh, lingo still that, the volatile oil, because the Dong Kui that we have, you never, never do the ethanol wash process in Hong Kong, or even in China or anywhere. So indeed, Lingu still dies. This is the bad guy from Dong Kui, and that is a very good reason. Dong Kui is ranked in the middle of San Long Ben Jing, not the number one, because of this chemical. And indeed, this chemical, you can see that, you can put Wang Qi, you boil them with all this chemical together. You look for the good chemical coming from Wang Qi. If you increase this volatile oil, the good guy decreases. So that means you, you want to carry off this bad guy. How do you do it? After the wash. All right. So not only that, if you use the Dong Kui Pu Tang to stimulate your bone to grow, the lingo still die, you suppress them. All right. Let's look at the Si Wu Chen Shi. So Wang Qi Yi Liang, Dong Kui Liang they say that this is a 30 gram, and that is about six, six gram, five to one ratio. So good reason, you do different ratio. You ask a question, which ratio will be the best, all right? So chemically, I want to draw attention. Five to one is the best, all right? So you don't believe me, aspect side, good, very exit, calcosin, polypentin, total polysaccharide, they are the good guys, they are all going up. Except lingo still die. If you remember, I say this is the bad guy in Dong Kui. They are the lowest. Very good, five to one. All right, when you look at the biological function, five to one, they're the best. So this is uh, Li Zhongyuan in around 800 years ago, without any sophisticated instrument like we have in Hong Kong. All right, again, you look at all those uh, people. So they say that uh, you put the herb into the mouth and put them together and boil them by modern heat and you drink them daily. So number one, you need to put it into the mouth, all right? So that step, I have not done that, all right? So because if I put a heart into my mouth and chew it up, spread it out and boil it, you and I will not drink it, all right? <laughs> so, but that is a very good reason. In the old time, you have no cutter, you have no grinder. So indeed, this is a very good reason that you put it in the mouth. So instead, we grind it up in the powder you boil them together. We ask a question, will that the cause it? We really need boiling together or boiling separately. So you make boiling together and boiling separately. Believe me, boiling together, they make things very different, all right? So you can see that all my experimental data. We do all those are proteomic, genomic, you know, the so sophisticated biology today. So we ask a question, you put down white, what happened? You put Wang Qi, what happened? You put Dong Kui, Bu Shi Tang together, what happened? Could one plus one equal to two? Well, Tony will say yes, one plus one equal to two. But in Chinese medicine, one plus one is more than two. All right, indeed, you have all those gene activations. They only happen when you put the two half body together. And that is telling us that Li Dong Yan indeed is correct. You need to boil the half together. Very similar, when you drink the milk tea. You drink the milk first. 
and you drink the tea. Is that corresponding to milk tea? The answer is no. <laughs> okay. I want to tell you further what the Dong Guai is doing to the Dong Guai Bush Tong. So when you look at the Li Dong Yuan, uh, one thing that uh, I forgot to mention, if you look at the detail, Wang Qi, you need to have a dead. So this word is corresponding to the honey process defined Wang Qi. So you put the honey, you dry the Wang Qi. So we do all those chemical analysis and biological analysis. The honey will not do anything to Wang Qi. But if I make the decoction with the honey fiber Wang Qi decoction Dong Gui Bu Chi Tong, and the normal Dong Gui Bu Chi Tong with fiber the honey, the lady will love it. They are very sweet. Right? So if you know that the Dong Gui, they are kind of sour. But having those uh, honey, the decoction, it tastes very well. So uh, indeed, Li Dong Yuan not only mentioned about your body, they also thinking about the psychology. Remember, that that caution is for ladies. And you can see that the ladies does love chocolate. All right, and dessert. OK. In the decaution, Wang Qi, we have a four chemicals. I don't want to give you detail about those chemicals. But that chemical is very important for our EPO production, FO protein. What are these chemicals? So this is the engine making this product. Each year, they make around 20 billion US dollars. All right? But the, Wang Qi can do similar job, like the engine, all right? So this chemical is prescribed for people they have a chemotherapy after cancer. Prescribed with people with the kidney failure. So they increase the rapid cell production. So indeed, this chemical can do the similar thing in the uh, breast stimulation. So remember that chemical. Four, they are in a pair. This one has a sugar, that one without sugar, okay? So now, we ask a question. This chemical is so important for the blood stimulations. We look for the absorption. If you know the chemistry, you will know that this is a fibrin, all right? So they will not go to your body very fast, very slow. You need to take huge amount, all right? We do some kind of absorption assay. So you put Dong Gui together with all those chemicals. I'm telling you, look at the, the result here. So having the Dong Gui in the gut together. They help those uh, fibrinoids go to your body circulation faster, better. So that explains why the Dong Gui do it better. And remember, when you boil the Dong Gui together, this chemical goes up. All right, <coughs> the other thing is, when you look at all these uh, procedures, they say that you have to boil by moderate heat. So many people asking me a question, why we need to boil the Chinese medicine? by moderate heat. Why not use put it in the microwave with the hot water? They can do it in a minute. So I'm telling you, this is no good. You have to boil them in moderate heat. So I show you how to do it. They will boil around three to four hours, all right? So you boil them very slowly. You look at all those uh, active chemicals. They have some changes. So I want to draw your attention. In the time between 40 to 100 degrees C, that is the boiling around 30 minutes to uh, 90 minutes. So in that period, they have something happen. So these two chemicals, all right, so they have a sugar attached to the backbone. So they turn into the calcosin and the polymentin. And I did mention that these two chemicals is very active chemical in Wang Qi in the course. They are very good for the blood stimulations. So and indeed, you hide, you put them in the decoction. You boil them very gently. You put Dong Gui, you put Dong Gui extra when you boil them together. So these two chemicals, they will hydrolyze. The sugar disappear. The sugar disappear, they turn in the backbone. So when they turn in the backbone, number one, the absorption is better. Number two, the functionality is better. So that is, if you boil the decoction at 100 degree at the very beginning, no way you can see all this phenomena. All right. So that tell me and you to boil your decoction at a moderate heat, all right? So how long is moderate? Two hours, okay, until boiling. All right, we do think that a Dong Gui Bu Tong could work that way. So this is a, for me in terms of research direction. Number one, they could have a single action. You have a multiple number of chemicals, all right? So each one work on a particular enzyme, particular target. 
So the other one, I think is a more important, is a synergistic effect. So I already demonstrated to you. The synergistic effect of Wang Qi and Dong Gui is very, very important in preparing Dong Gui Fu Chitong, as well as functionally, they are very important. The other thing is, when the new two hot body together, they could make new chemicals, all right? So I already tell you, when the two hot boy together, those good guys go up, the bad guy go down, all right? And that requires you to boil them together. So before I finish my story, I wanted to give you another story. So if you ask me, Dong Gui Bu Shi Tang, could that be only coming from the Yun Dynasty? The answer is no, all right? So the good thing for the Chinese is, we like to write down what we have. Right? You go to the library to open the book and to read all those uh, stories. So in the uh, Song Dynasty, that is the after cry around 1,000 years. So we have a uh, TCM practitioner, Chen Shouying, is also very famous. So it's also made of the course called the Dong Gui Bu Shi Tang, but at that time we have Dong Gui, Wang Qi, Jinzhe, and Dai Tang. Right? So this is the uh, Li Dongyuan, the one that I'm talking about. In the uh, Qing Dynasty, in the early chain. This is in the Qianlong. So Chen Xidong is another very well-known uh, TCM practitioner in Qing Dynasty. He put Wang Qi, Dong Gui. This is a uh, Wu Chen, this is Yi Liang. Dong Gui is the major hub. And then you put Di Wang, Shu Di Wang, all right? So what for? Song Dynasty, this is for women. Jing Dynasty, this is for women. In the Qing Dynasty, this is for men. So if you look at the prescription, they prescribe to those people in the Qing Dynasty, when the man without qi, and the man without qi, you do not able to produce baby. You drink this, right? This is for manhood. So now, after that formulation, maybe next time when I talk about this one, we turn around the audience. We have more men around the <laughs> And indeed, for me, it's very important. How come our old ancestor could fool around with all those uh, lumber? They change the ratio, put something out. Are they really doing something very different? We are not talking about similar function. We are talking about men and women, two different functions in here. So indeed, this is a one of the challenge. Commercializations. So I'm telling a, I'm telling a John. <coughs> so this Dong Wei Bu Tang, we have been working for them for the last almost like 15 years. So we publish a lot, we get a lot of research funding. On top of that, uh, we have two awards from mainland China on this uh, herbal formulation. Beyond that, we make many, many intellectual property, the IP. How can we make IP? The thing is, the Chinese medicine cannot have IP because you know them from a book, all right? But however, you can <coughs> fool around with the razor. You can change with the herb. You know what you're doing, you change the razor. You change the extraction method. You make sure that the Angelica have to be ethanol washed. You make sure the Wang Chu had to be paused. In that case, we have all those uh, IP of Think from China. So two years ago, we sold this IP, go through the VPLG office, we gained a three million Hong Kong dollars, all right? Not much work, I'm telling you, beyond we can make all those uh, publications, we can make all this IP production. So they are making all those as a health supplement in China today. The herbal market is huge. I give you some number. So this is the uh, the most popular Ling Chi, all right? I don't know whether anybody coming from Vita Green, but this is a very popular. The turnover is around 70 million Hong Kong dollars, right? So this Ling Chi, if you go to a washroom, they are talking about 500 to 600 Hong Kong dollars for one package, all right? It's about uh, 50 gram to 100 gram. If you go to China, you go to restaurant, you either drink the Wang or Ji, or Dado Pao, all right? So they changed the name very recently. So that drink is around less than two Hong Kong dollars. And turnover, six billion MMB, all right? So what are the pawns? The pawn is, number one, these are not medicine. These are not medicine, I'm telling you. You can buy that as much as you can. But however, this is the health supplement. So what are the good things of health supplement? And remember when I talk about Wang Di Nai Jing. So the prevention of disease is number one important in our daily life. And indeed, when you do the health supplement, you don't need that much paperwork. 
You don't need that much investment, all right? So I'm telling you, for the Lingzhi, the cost could be all, well, I hope Wei Tech Green people is not here. Maybe around 10 Hong Kong dollars, all right? So the other one is the advertisement, the package, and the uh, sales, and everything add on to 500, all right? So that investment for most of the businessmen in this room is not that much, but the turnover is huge. And remember, the China market, all right? So nobody would like to develop health food supplement in Hong Kong for very good reasons. If you can sell in Hong Kong, not in China, no good, all right? But the good thing is in Hong Kong, I give you one number. In the Chinese medicine, in the Hong Kong people, each year we spend one Hong Kong dollars. The people from mainland China, they come here for tourists, they spend free, all right? In total, we are talking about four dollars. So why the people from China come in to buy our Chinese medicine? We are not producing anything. Good reason, quality control. The name brand, all right? So indeed, this is the direction that we should go. We should not give our raw material, give all of them to Germany, or all of them to Japan. So we can give it to Hong Kong, turn it around to take a certain share of our money, all right? At HKUSD, Beyond the uh, Dongguan Bushi talk, we have a more have to be commercialized, all right? We have the uh, decoction called the Kai San San, so for the Westerner, that means have PP, all right? <laughs> so this is not the uh, opioid or ketamine. So this decoction is written down in the Tang Dynasty, all right? So this is mainly for people who have depression. Remember, you and I, once in a time, have a depression, all right? <laughs> And indeed, if you can drink that caution daily, this is coming from the Tang Dynasty, and you prevent depression, right? You prevent yourself from anxiety. You prevent yourself as not able to sleep. So this is one of our major target today. Fu Chao Sa, this is from the Song Dynasty for cardiovascular disease, and this is a Yu Ping Feng Sa. If you read the newspaper recently around the avian virus, all right? So they are coming two kind of a herb disappear in China. One is Ban and Gum, all right? The other one is a Yu Ping Feng San. So what they do? Antiviral. So and indeed, we would like to develop all those herbs in Hong Kong and, and HKUSD. And if you, anyone want to put it as a dollar sign, I am very happy to talk to you. <laughs> and thank you, thank you for your attention. Thank you.